Hello people, and welcome back to part 2 of the City Skylines Noobs Guide, the way to play in a slow, detailed fashion. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Indeed, thank you for all the support last time out. You guys really enjoyed, of course, as always, uh, a vanilla start in City Skylines, and we can now enjoy the fruits of our labour from uh, the hour last week, right? Lots of people walking around now, and you can just imagine, you know, if these people weren't walking, they would all be... You know, driving around or having to walk further, which means more traffic on our roads. So the more people that are walking is the better. And we can see the benefit of using all those walking paths as detailing points now. Main street's looking really nice. Got some little flower bed and pathway designs in here. Of course, all vanilla. Right, this is all base game stuff and you can still make it look great. And then Main Street kind of carries on here and we run into more of our detailing. And everyone's happy. And we're going to start talking about some new ideas as well. And hopefully we can get to uh, public transport today. It would be nice to start introducing some uh, bus lines and start introducing uh, all you noobs into public transport for the first time today as well. Uh, so right now uh, we've loaded back into city skylines and we've got big spikes for uh, residential demand. So immediately we know that we need to expand our residential offering and there's opportunities to do so uh, off of the back of uh, last episode's expansion. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring all these straight roads up by an initial measurement of 40. Okay. Let me bring this one up a little bit shallower. Now, of course, you can just keep running in very straight, rigid angles, but don't be afraid to start introducing some curves into your suburban uh, patterns now. Very much using the same techniques that we uh, used to build the first service interchange last episode, right? So why don't we curve by 10? And then just introduce a little bit of a, a curve into what is a very straight, uh, rigid suburban road network, okay? That's not going to be too bad, I don't think. Also bring a road through here too. And then maybe one down into the middle. And then let's box everyone off at the top. We can bring this one in as well. You know, just a simple curve, a dead end of a cul-de-sac. And now you just have a slightly, slightly more interesting uh, residential pattern to play with. So, you know, don't be afraid to start introducing those curves in different shapes. Uh, and of course, you can stick to your uh, specific zoning that I was using last episode, but it's entirely optional. Of course, I'm going to save a space there for a pathway to come through because you can just start to identify these little opportunities now to make your city uh, a lot more walkable uh, as and where you see it. Maybe bring one through there. But we have one straight through the back here too. And then all this can be zoned up. Okay, again I'm going to stick to my specific zoning. Uh, just because in, in the long run, you know, you're going to get a much more uniform looking suburb, which for me is uh, always appreciated, right? You know, when something's nice and neat and you're happy with it, you tend to enjoy it a lot more, right? There we go. So of course we can wait for all these guys to come in. Uh, where we talk about how we can use uh, a few of these other spaces around here. So I've mentioned a few times for those that have maybe followed Begusia and Palavan and Avaria that there are certain assets within the game uh, that allow you to expand them. Uh, very much like the small park here, you know, you can draw paths out of it. And you can essentially make park life areas out of these assets without actually having the park life DLC. And just creating little clusters uh, of kind of green belt that flow around the suburb, okay? So this is what we'll do. With perhaps this space here where the zoning is a little bit more awkward. So we'll come into our park assets and let's start piecing together perhaps a large playground. We'll grab dog park on the corner over here. Maybe a bouncy castle park. And then maybe a small playground over here as well. Okay. And again we can just come into that freeform tool that we used last episode at a couple of occasions to... Start linking all these areas together now, okay? Start bringing this through here. And then, you know, don't be afraid to embellish with a little bit of commercial zoning, just to sit as part of the park, all right? Maybe a couple of different shapes and sizes here and there. And again, don't forget just to link your paths through. You know, once you have an initial shape in, your detailing can carry on around this. We can introducing some clusters of kind of smaller green tree if you like nothing overly serious right now 
If you really find yourself enjoying uh, the detailing aspects of this game, then Part Life DLC is something you'll uh, get immense enjoyment out of, which we'll cover in this series as well. So a few of these tall trees as well. A couple of years. Of course, not forgetting that our uh, water services will need to be expanded uh, alongside that new grid, so we can start bringing these in. Make sure that staying somewhat straight there would be helpful. Go. Also, see there's some power issues again, exactly the same process as last episode. And we can see that we're now in the orange, so the first thing to check is your economy tab. Yeah, we have breathing room back up to the 100% margin on the budget, which will fix all of our issues. Wonderful. And you'll see the assets go away. Fantastic. So, there is a brief conversation I want to have uh, about asset selection. So there are some assets within the vanilla pool, especially the vanilla pool, that are horrifically ugly. So this is a low density commercial building, and it's awful. I <laughs> really don't like it. We can delete these, okay? And we can wait for them to come back in. And we do have a little bit of uh, commercial demand, so it shouldn't be too long uh, before these come in. But there's something we can do um, that is called historicalizing a building, which means that it maintains its appearance. So say for example, right, I am a huge lover of this particular commercial asset right here and I don't want this to change its appearance as it levels up. When I click on the building, I have an option to historical the building. What this does, it means it will still level up, it will still gather more workers and it will still pay more tax as it moves through these three levels. But it won't change its appearance, which is really important for creating appropriate looking suburbs because a lot of the high density commercial assets especially alongside some of the low density commercial looks absolutely horrific so it's important that we keep our eye on it which is what we'll do all right oh, wonderful here's our next uh, batch of housing uh, available to come in we can fill that one in there that's going to be nice also over here as well i think we'll actually leave this one free again for uh, our little kind of path detailing belt that we're getting used to and implementing throughout this suburb so we'll bring in Bit of a pathway there, and then we can start lining some trees as well. Okay, it's always about making your suburbs a little bit more interesting. Okay, very nice. You can also feel in a little center of uh, commercial alongside here as well. I'm going to perhaps mix and match uh, the shapes here as well. So, why don't we go for some slightly different vibes? And again, just snapping into my grid back through here put that through so you notice i can't hook through here this is because we're too close to this node so i can just either cut straight through or have it to come another node over to draw out so it's kind of up to you as to which one you want i'm just going to draw over and out i think Bring that down and again i can carry on this same little palette that's now developing over here as well all right and maybe some touches of residential in there too so who you now just see the impact that makes a little bit of commercial with some park assets and a pathway just allows essentially the kind of a little green belt to develop in the suburb. You know, the suburb will now carry on surrounding this park and it will just be enveloped as part of the city. But it's been kind of hand built, custom made by you. And there's a thousand different variations, you know, of these designs as well. It's not just one suits all, right? So we can see that these commercial assets have come back in now as two big bites. So I might want to historicalize one. Let another level up through its levels, but it's not kind of a game changing mechanic to be selected with assets, but it definitely makes a difference from an aesthetic point of view. Might also want to take him out as well, but we'll leave him there for right now. Okay. Yep, you're fine. As are you. Make these historical. Fantastic. Let's carry on uh, expanding out our grid and heading up towards uh, that 2600 milestone. Okay, so there we go. You can just see how I've stuck to my 90 degree snap. Also continually to save spaces. My little walkable pathway that is appearing in this suburb, right? It's also about maintaining these initial starting ideas and 
You know, still getting used to the functions of the game as well, you know? How are people going to walk around and... These are all things you'll find out just as you carry on playing. But no, now that I can carry on this walking path here because it connects all the way down into here now. And we'll see people use this, right? So rather than them having to walk all the way around the grid network, they can now use this little pathway that just meanders back into the suburb. And I'm also using this as a little bit of a kind of a border or boundary uh, away from the noise pollution that the wind turbines are causing. Because we definitely couldn't zone uh, residential here, right? You know, this is way too loud. So we can use kind of this path as a little boundary to say, you know, don't zone any residential past there. Okay, so we're now starting to get uh, some pretty significant spikes in industry demand. Now, this is where I want to have a little chat um, about discussing opening up uh, our first tile. So you would notice uh, last episode, as we moved through the tiles, we unlocked new zones. Now, in the unmodded vanilla game, both PC and console, you will get nine of these tiles, which isn't that big. Um, if you're on the PC, I highly recommend downloading the 81 tiles mod. It gives you access to the full map and isn't kind of really a mod. It's just kind of how the game should be. Kind of a drawback to playing the vanilla game. You only get nine of these tiles, but there's still plenty that we can do in nine tiles, okay? So as we click this little icon uh, down here with the little globe in the bottom left, we come out into this view, which highlights the tiles. And we can click on each of these tiles as well to get a little breakdown of exactly what's happening in that tile. Gives you what outside connections it has. It has no uh, highway because there's no highway there. No rail, no sea, but it does have air connection. Likewise, if we click on this one, we can see that highway becomes available because there is highway flowing through it. There's no rail, there's no sea, but there's also air connection as well. You also get a suitable building percent area. So I think first of all, I'm going to knock uh, this tile uh, down here, okay, just to the south of the start, which gives me access uh, to the highway, which is going to be very important uh, for developing our industrial area. <laughs> we also need to rebuild this. This is horrific. This is not a good interchange at all. But either way, we can start talking about the expansion of our industrial area. The thing what I'm going to do is... Now I can see that I'm going to bring this industry down so it borders the highway. And we can do some stuff with frontage roads here today as well, so this looks nice. We're very close to hitting that milestone, though. So I'm wary of talking anymore. There we go. <laughs> okay. We'll carry on talking about that in a minute, but welcome to Boomtown, everyone, where we get another new tile, uh, Public Transport Level 3 Uniques. Uh, of course, all this will look different depending on what DLCs that you do and don't have, and, you know, some other assets. A very important asset in this cemetery uh, here as well. This is a very important one, kind of essentially the human equivalent of uh, the landfill site, right? If that's not an incredibly harsh way of putting it. But either way, we'll have a little chat about uh, that in a minute. I want to start upgrading our industrial area. So with this one-way system now, I'm now going to make this uh, arterial road. Because it's going to carry people uh, through this area for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring this down probably to about here. Alright, wonderful. Now we're going to carry on expanding the industrial designs. Again, um, I have a little more money now. I can afford to place uh, tarmac roads at this point. Doesn't have to be just the dirt roads. I also want to make sure that I maintain a little one-way flow system here. Okay, just make sure that this comes through. And I think what we'll do here is we'll do a bridge. All right, we're going to do a little bypass here. So I want to have a chat with what's going to happen with the end of this bottom four-way road here. Okay, I'm just going to add a little slip system off of one direction off of the highway for industrial traffic to siphon off into the industrial area rather than having to come down into the interchange, into the city, through the roundabout system, and then into here. Just giving them a little bit of highway access. Doesn't have to be both sides. You can do it both sides if you'd like, but this is just going to help alleviate the pressure off of this main interchange, right? You'll see how this functions once we get it in. So I'm going to bring my four lane road down just a touch more, possibly to about there. And I'm going to use uh, these highway roads. I'm actually going to use a one-way road first because they snap a little bit easier. I'm going to come out by 10 on either side, okay? Again, following those second blue lines. I'm going into my freeform tool. I'm just going to move out and find a nice sensible place to hook into the highway. That was a distance of about 440, wasn't it? So repeat that on this side. 
Now you could upgrade into highway ramp here if you wanted to. Um, we will eventually get access with the mass transit DLC, access to two lane highways. Uh, but we're not using them just yet because we're sticking with our uh, vanilla assets. Okay. You just see how this functions, right? It's just going to siphon off a little bit of traffic as people come in. They can move around the area. It's just going to alleviate the pressure off of this main roundabout, okay? That's what it's all about. I'm going to come back into finishing this industrial area now. Let's uh, again make a little bridge. I'm going to come out by 13 and then elevate by 3, again using my lowest elevation step. I'm going to come straight across the road there and we can redraw, remember, exactly how we did in episode 1. From one point to another to discover it's a distance of 1480. I can repeat that measurement down on this side again as well if I wanted to. All right, very nice. And I can feed this back into the one-way loop here, and then just bring out some expansion for my industrial area to occupy this space over here. And again, you know, don't forget to carry on using your kind of walkability templates here. You know, people will still walk around your industrial areas to get to work and lots of different things. Make sure that you factor it in, okay? So I think what I will do here as well is possibly bring in the idea or introduce you to the concept of uh, frontage roads or road against road action. Now, this is where we can line up a road to hold assets or zone in so they face out onto the main arterial without actually landing or being placed on the main arterial itself, okay? So, so you know, now I can just position these kind of larger, more important industrial-looking assets Alongside some elevated infrastructure, which again is going to bring a more industrious vibe. But the frontage road here is also going to kind of help decorate my main road as well, you know. As people are coming into this industrial area, they're driving past these large factories. And it makes a difference, it really does. Better kind of positioning assets and, you know, just deciding how things should be placed. I'm going to do the same thing here again as well. Okay, so now I have some uh, more... Industrial space uh, mapped out, ready for expansion. So let's go ahead and fill uh, all of this in. Again, remembering uh, my idea from the first episode that I don't want to be zoning on these one-way roads, okay? I want them to be free. I want no one stopping on them. So we're only going to zone these little side roads. And again, it's a great opportunity uh, for walkability to come through here. But hopefully now you can see the benefit of a slip system, right? Just a little highway exit. And I've always found these to be useful. Um, you know, obviously they can't get off from the other side. They have to come through this interchange, which is fine. You know, this can still be used for industrial traffic. But the whole point of this is to just take a little bit of pressure off of the main intersections, okay? And that's something you'll really benefit from in city skylines is just alleviating the pressure off of other junctions can really help improve traffic. Uh, so let's have a look at that milestone that we just unlocked because we did just get cemeteries which is a very important aspect of the game because your sims uh, will eventually die and they will need to go somewhere and currently the only option they have to go is a cemetery. There is also a crematorium however this does not unlock until 16,000 population so forget about the crematorium for a while. So the cemetery functions exactly the same as the landfill site once we place it it cannot be moved without being emptied. And it also has a percentage uh, kind of fill, you know, it can store 3,000 dead bodies before it gets filled up. At which point you either need to empty it out into a crematorium or place another cemetery. But we don't like this, right? This is just a cemetery on a road. This is terrible. <laughs> let's, um, let's make a little bit of like a cemetery garden, okay? Because exactly the same premise as our school assets. Give them a little more focus and attention. Don't just place them on a road and be done with it. You'll add a lot more personality into the city as you go here. Okay. So I'm thinking I'm eyeing up a space along here. This space right here. So let's take out that pathway that we placed in earlier. And we will bring it back through and make it kind of part of the uh, cemetery build itself. Which will be really fun. Let's see what we can do with this one. So we do have some nicer roads that aren't unlocked till 5,000, so we can bring them in eventually, but we can detail our own roads, okay? So I'm going to bring out a road by 200, and then I'm going to go out for 10 on each side, and let's see what happens here. 
So we can place in cemetery. But I want to redraw these measurements now. So I go for 12 on each side. Okay, so I can hold that there. That's going to be fine. And then there's opportunities now to uh, place another one here when the expansion uh, needs it. But we can do uh, some nicer things here to kind of, again, just help separate this uh, away from the rest of the suburb. And I think what I'm going to do to help with that differentiation is actually downgrade uh, the main cemetery roads into dirt. Okay, so we'll have a little look at this. Let's start coming out with our pathways here in multiple different directions. We will reinstate that little curvy boy that comes around the back. straight down also provide a connection in why not so why don't we start working with the premise of a little dirt path border to essentially function as a fence but we don't have access to fences yet uh, because we're not playing with the industries or part life dlcs so until that point we have to make do uh, with some pretty improvised uh, vanilla detailing palettes but that doesn't mean that they're bad so why don't we bring in a line of trees around this little cemetery okay Maybe go for some colourful trees as we approach the main road. And then I think quite a thick layer of overgrowth between the network systems will again just help separate it out that little bit more. Don't be afraid to drop in some splashes of colourful tree in here as well if you need. Okay. So I think rather than just placing the cemetery on a road and being done with it, and that does have its place, the actual kind of stone wall itself can be used from a decoration perspective, especially when you start doubling them up. But I think for a little single place cemetery, we can use it within the noise pollution radius of the wind turbines, so no one's going to get upset about that. And we've now got a nice little detailed cemetery park that can be expanded with another cemetery at will as and when we need it, which is fantastic. Let's have a look what else we unlocked. I uh, did unlock a lot of other stuff. Um, want to make sure we cover vanilla assets. So yeah, we did also get bus depots, which I want to cover. We did also get the elder care and child care stuff as well. So these are really cool assets. So the elder care will increase the lifespan of the elderly and the child health care center will increase the birth weight of the young. So really cool assets. And you can see they have kind of a big blue radius on them. This is the radius of which that will take effect. But again, I don't just kind of want them placed uh, here, there, and everywhere, all right? So I'm thinking of eyeing up the elder care center opposite the graveyard. So I think I'm going to cluster uh, these two health care center units in and around the graveyard. So we're going to have our child health care center here. You know, this is going to now boost the birth rate, which will in turn uh, increase our population and force us quicker to that next milestone, which is always good, right? Now why don't we have the uh, elder care center kind of knocking around in this space here and again I want to use a kind of a similar premise of frontage or holding road uh, to allow the old people to look out over the graveyard. Okay, So we can now just see by using some of these kind of holding frontage road systems to accommodate these more important looking assets how we can start to create a little bit of a essentially kind of a theme and a vibe, right? You know, it's just more neighborhood personality. This is what the game's all about for me is customizing all these little individual neighborhoods. You know, we're not just mass zoning and trying our hardest to burn through those milestones. We're taking our time and enjoying the game and just relaxing, right? <laughs> That's what playing video games is all about at the end of the day. If you're not having fun, then why are we playing? Go for a bouncy castle next door to the child health care center as well, okay? And perhaps, again, some more colourful trees that the children will enjoy seeing every day. Just little lines of colourful action. Get some regular, more natural kind of landscape in here as well if you want. Doesn't all have to be kind of mega landscaped. But there you go. Now just taking a little tour around these streets, right? Things are a lot nicer. Well, they are. Once I do this, 
Maybe that just wants a little line of trees there, doesn't it? With maybe a little line of bushes too. But I love Vanilla City Skylines. <laughs> it's just so good. So it's a good game, everyone. Right, but hopefully now you can see the impression of just separating assets out onto their own roads. You know, and switch in between, you know, tarmac and gravel roads to accentuate the difference between, you know, different kind of stylized and zoned up areas. So I'm happy with that. I can also see that uh, more zoning in my specifically zoned pattern has now made itself available to be filled in. So I can come ahead and do that. And then also start bringing in some more of those shapes as well. Again, you can see where the pattern shatters, which is another opportunity yet again for walkability. You might think this guy is really kind of just taking the piss with all these pathways, but you will notice an enormous difference in your traffic by using pathways as decoration and keeping your city nice and walkable. Okay, but I think that's going to be a nice little healthcare slash deathcare service area, right, in the suburb. Okay, so now let's have a chat about public transport, shall we? So we have our first one available to us, which is a bus. So public transport is a major system in city skylines. There are a whole bunch of different ones to choose from. And there's buses, which is the base game, alongside metro and plane as well. And then through various DLCs, uh, trams added with snowfall, trolley buses, Sunset Harbour. Uh, trains are in the base game as well. Uh, monorail is added with mass transit and there's many different options and enormous transport hubs um, so public transport is a very key mechanic of the game and it's important to understand that from the start and implementing a solid public transport structure as you grow and I can't accentuate that anymore <laughs> like as you grow will really alleviate your traffic problems in the future because your public transport network is growing alongside your road network. This is a really important point to how I play the game. And it's kind of hard to describe the process without watching something like Palavan. Um, you know, and I think Palavan's public transport uh, infrastructure, that kind of speaks for itself, right? You all saw how we did that. So that's what we're doing in this city as well, right? I want my public transport to grow with my road network. So first of all, we're going to come into this button down here which is for public transport. I'm going to grab a bus and we have an option here for a bus depot. If you are playing with the Green Cities DLC, you will also get access to a biofuel bus depot. The biofuel buses are just quieter than regular buses. They carry the same amount of people. It's just a very slightly green version of the bus. It has a different model as well. The first thing you want to do is place in a bus depot. And again, you know, this is a pretty kind of important service asset. So I want this to stand out on its own. So I'm going to bring this one down here again to kind of serve as a little bit of a frontage road, right? So I can hold uh, my little bus station asset out here, which is going to need water, which it already has. And that's it, right? That's the bus depot. Currently has zero buses in use because we haven't drawn out a bus line, which is the one down here. So once you place a bus depot, you will get access to bus lines. And now we can start drawing these in. So you left click to draw in a stop and you can right click to delete it. The point is that we want these stops to, you know, serve different areas and also interlink with other methods of public transport as well. But we don't have those other methods at the minute, so we're just going to have to make do with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this on my main road here and then I'm going to start feeding it through my suburb. Now a kind of a good general rule of thumb is every three to four blocks of kind of suburban sprawl is a good barometer to place another bus stop. So just, I, you know, you don't want to be doing this. This is ridiculous. You know, please don't do this <laughs> with public transport stops. That's way too many too close together. Uh, you'll also notice as I'm placing public transport stops, uh, that it's making the people happy. Uh, so it's going to increase the happiness. Uh, very much like parks and kind of other stuff like that do, right? Uh, I want my bus to uh, perhaps maybe come and stop uh, opposite my little my little park here. Okay. And then we're going to bring this road into the main one. To continue placing a line you've already drawn in that isn't finished, just simply left click and hold the last stop. 
and then you can come in and start adding new stops onto it. So I'm going to bring this one down here, and then this can now run down the main road. Wonderful. Then we will stop opposite here as we come back down. We will make a brief pass through the industrial area, stopping here on the main road. And then we will come back in to this one here, which completes the line. And you can see where it follows, okay? If you want to click and add new stops, you just drag line to add stop. Super simple. If you want to delete it, you just right click it and it goes away. So now that we've placed in a bus line, we have buses emerging from the bus depot. Who would have thought that? And we can click on a bus and go to line details where we can check the number of passengers at the stops plus on the vehicles. We can amend the number of vehicles that are on this line, which thus will increase the budget. And we can also change the line color which again is done with this little uh, slider down here, okay? Classic colour picker. And then they're going to head out onto the line and start servicing it. So you'll see now at the bus stop, Sims will get on the buses and go on their journey. So we'll have a little, little follow around of this new uh, bright yellow bus over here, okay? It's going to come into the suburb. Follow that line that we've just drawn in. We can see where the next stop is up here. Very nice. There's something really cool we can do with bus stops as well that I'll show you today. Now we'll have a little look at how we can actually decorate the road networks by using bus stops in a slightly different fashion. It's pretty cool. And there we go, isn't it? It's going to pick people up and drop them off as they come around. Which is fantastic news. So it's important that we keep an eye on our public transport lines because they can become inefficient due to becoming too busy. Uh, just in the fact that, you know, there's not enough vehicles uh, servicing the amount of people waiting. So by coming into a public transport lines overview, uh, you can break it down per method of public transport here. Um, you can name your bus lines as well. I would recommend doing this. makes it a lot easier once these lists start to get longer. Uh, you can change your model if you have the models in here. And, you know, just have a little look around at your public transport information. So we can see now, things are running for a little bit with our buses, and you can click on each bus, and it will kind of zoom over to it where, as to where it is on the line, and show you how full it is as well. So it's cool that we have buses in now. I mean, very cool. So now that we've got buses in, and we're starting to see public transport uh, get introduced into the city, I want to have a little talk about what's going to happen uh, with the highway, because we're very clearly uh, planning to expand this, so... I'm going to come back into my highway roads here. Now I can start drawing out with these. And these are the same roads that are uh, over here, right? Uh, three lane uh, highway roads. And we can use these to uh, expand up. Not that one though. Let's get that with that one. There we go. So now I want to start planning out and envisioning uh, where the highway is going to flow. And I'm imagining eventually Essentially, you're kind of up to that beach over there, right? You know, I'm going to land over there at some point. So I probably want the highway to carry on flowing uh, through that as well. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, but I think, first of all, I'm going to map this out with uh, two-lane uh, one-way road. Uh, for the time being, because we're not quite at the point yet where I want to go and spend uh, a vast amount uh, on a brand new highway. So let's come up through here. We'll worry about our direction towards the end. A bunch of these rocks. There's a whole lot here, actually. Okay, so I brought my highway up to the spot here. Now why don't we come in with curved road? I think I'll curve by 20, and then I'm just going to take off two sections of this, okay? And then I'm going to start running perfectly straight. And you can see how this is going to happen now. This will meander around and come into some kind of eventual uh, high density downtown but look at this immediately uh, everyone uh, has no water and that is because i've severed uh, the power connection to the water pumps that should fix that issue yes there it goes everyone is happy again just about fantastic very nearly needing to buy some new uh, water treatment facilities anyway i want to line up those spaces either side making sure that we're saving Two tiles in between. Bring this down. Get a little freeform curve. And then hook that in. So that's a go for a curve instead of a freeform there. There we go. 
And then bring this down. So just stay in parallel. But I now want to have a chat about the introduction of a new uh, highway service interchange or slip ramp. So people can uh, come on and off into the city uh, over here. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to carry on bringing out this four lane arterial. And again, I'm going to give it a little bit of room to breathe here. I'm going to have that on there. And again, I'm going to start introducing some more curves here today as well. Some points here, I'm going to break the highway. That's going to be fine. I'm going to draw through a road through the middle. Okay. I'm going to in a few of these rocks where possible. So the way you want to build this uh, slip interchange here is it's a really basic vanilla one. Uh, it does its job and it's going to help handle a little bit more traffic for us. So from this point here, I want to come out by 10 tiles. And then I'm going to redraw that 10, but this time uh, sink down and go under. Okay, so we'll do the same each of these here. So saving a tile against the arterial. I'm going to click and drag to 10. And then let go. And then come back in and redraw the 10 so we're going under. Again, pages up and down will uh, control the bridges for you. I want to do exactly the same on this side as well, which is going to ensure that I'm equidistant and then connect the tunnels uh, under the road. Okay, nice and simple. And we can come back up to the surface and then hug everyone in. And then go ahead and just change up uh, your lane directions to be uh, left hand traffic or right hand traffic depending on what you're playing with. Everyone will be different here. Fantastic. And that's the wrong way around. Let's come underground and turn that one around as well. Fantastic. There we go. Okay. So this is what we're looking like right now. We are kind of four tiles away. You can see where the pattern kind of mirrors itself here, right, with the zoning. So they're pretty easy to tell when you're symmetrical just by using the zoning like that. So now I'm going to come in again at two tiles either side of where the tunnels enter and then connect straight in to the main arterial road. Repeat that on these sides as well. Now something that looks a little bit like that. And just a very simple case indeed of uh, hooking everyone back in now. Again, at a cost of 440, seems to be a nice, uh, sensible curve that everyone's going to be happy with. Okay. And then we can flip these around. And as the highway now continues to grow in this area, it will move around there. And we can continually plan the city uh, around the highway. And that's going to be really fun. So now let's come back into this road here. Delete that one and come on to our curve tool. And again, just matching up with those road guidelines, we can now create a small curve back into that interchange. So with the roads here, 100% don't zone these roads that are going to be feeding interchanges because people are going to be stopping on them. There'll be more traffic. You want these to be free so people can kind of come and go from the city as they please. So the AI will read uh, faster roads as a faster way around the city. So that's something to bear in mind. So I could come through now and upgrade these roads here uh, into highway roads, uh, which are faster. Okay, so the Sims will read these as a faster way around the city. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring them up to the bridges. And we'll see now just as kind of the AI picks up uh, this route out of town, rather than having to force the way all the way back through, you'll see how it works. And here we go. Here is our first little little service person. So where's he going? I'm going to guess he's leaving the city, isn't he? Yeah, so he's exporting goods. Right? And exactly the same concept that we used with our little highway slip road. This interchange here is now just going to alleviate the pressure off of this one. You know, as the highway is allowed to extend, it's going to serve as a faster option around town. Therefore, a bunch of different people. All right? Now we can also upgrade this road into highway lane now as well. This one right here. Don't worry about that bridge. We can just simply rebuild it. Go ahead and grab that walking bridge again. There we go. Go down 
it's worth. We also lost uh, this one too, I believe. Yes, we did. So we can see that by looking at our noise pollution radius on the highway roads that they are loud roads once they are in use. So having them uh, sensibly spaced away from residential is going to be important here. Okay, so why don't we go for about nine tiles distance between. That should be okay. All right. And I can now start bringing this one down here. Just start extending those shapes, perhaps bringing a little curve here if I wanted to. Okay, you know, just so that everything's straight, exactly what we did over here with that curve. You know, we don't have to stick so rigid. You can be a little creative if you want. And why don't we add in maybe a little suburban access road like onto this arterial here as well, just off of the highway. And again, it's not a road I'm going to want to zone. Okay. Also show you how to turn our traffic light, so we definitely don't want a traffic light here. Uh, let's come into our info views at the top. Coming down to traffic routes, this option down here. Come across the junctions, you can turn off the traffic light by clicking on it and then add a stop sign onto kind of the smaller road where you would expect a stop sign to be. So that's a nice way of doing it. Traffic lights, to be honest, I very, very rarely use them in vanilla city skylines at least anyway. So uh, something to bear in mind if you want kind of stop lights and different traffic systems around the city, okay? So once that working on getting some more population uh, into this part of town now, and, and we can hopefully see our new service uh, interchange come to life a little bit as well today, which will be very fun. And let me know as well um, which DLC uh, you guys want introducing first. Do you want to have a little look at Green Cities or Part Life, Mass Transit? Uh, just let me know which one you want to be introduced first and we can have Kind of a whole episode talking about that DLC and what it changes compared to its base game counterpart. And what I'll also do here as the city grows um, over on this side, uh, we can continue to have the walkable pathways across the highway. Because of course Sims can't walk on these roads, right? Kind of very much like we've been doing here, you know? Keeping people walking back and forth across the road that they can't cross. It's going to help keep them all happy. Very nice indeed. You can see here where more asset selection is needed. You can certainly see them popping up in the skyline. So up to you if you want to do it. I'll definitely have a little look at that during my detailing today. So you can see now how I'm just using the road guideline against current existing infrastructure uh, to create some kind of more interesting shapes. Okay. And we can see an opportunity here now where perhaps the arterial road can have some more frontage roads brought up and against it. Bring out another one here. And then connect that in. And then why don't we save, say, this space right here for perhaps another little suburban park that can develop. They're using the same techniques of kind of placing in park assets and then fleshing out around them uh, with pathway and other little bits and pieces. Bring that down there as well. And again, just using that outer blue circle, like we were doing in the first episode, to continually maximise uh, the zonable space that we have available to us. And as always, kind of more pathways linking people together, right? That's always going to be a nice time for everyone involved. Keeping everyone walking around. All right. Wonderful. So hopefully that kind of explains how we can break away out of kind of a very rigid grid that we're working with at the start to start introducing some more curves and angles and different types of vibes into the city here okay however guys i feel like that is a good place uh, for a detailing time lapse it's time to come through and uh, detail up our interchange again using very similar palettes and designs uh, that we did last time where we have kind of a central reservation of palm trees coming through at uh, these interchanges and there's little bits of kind of detail we can get involved with uh, carry on expanding out our industrial area as and when that industrial demand comes in. Again, we've got all these grids set up now and road systems ready to support. And there's more opportunities here uh, for, again, kind of larger service assets to sit against the highway, which all helps serve us from a decoration perspective, all right? Very nice indeed. 
But otherwise, uh, let's get detailed up and we'll carry on uh, specifically zoning our expansion today and then see where we end up. So we'll be right back. Hey guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help bring more people to my channel. If you'd like to help support my work, there are links down to Instant Gaming and Patreon below. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really happy with today's expansion and I hope you are enjoying uh, playing along in this style. For those of you that are actually following along with this build, We've covered some nice bourbon patterns today, how we can start to break away from some of those very straight rigid angles by introducing some slight curves. I uh, talked about how our highway will continue to be integrated uh, around the city as the city expands. Introduced buses and also discussed the idea of some frontage roads. And I've also brought in some similar frontage road ideas using some commercial to sit against the highway, uh, which you will see during our cinematics today. And do hang around for those cinematics. The uh, city is looking really, really quite cute now as we begin to uh, expand and bring in different ideas. Again, don't forget to let me know uh, which DLC pack you would like covered first. I'm happy to do any of them. Pretty much kind of leaning into part life at this point for obvious reasons. <laughs> I need my fences. Yeah, but otherwise, I am really enjoying this city. It's nice to kind of come back to the absolute base game basics after so long and uh, you know rediscover all these ideas that we picked up from. Palavan and Novaria and Ilos. So, uh, huge thank you for all the support, and I'm glad you're enjoying this series as well. But otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.